All right, well, praise the Lord. We're glad to be here on a Thursday evening in beautiful Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We fought off the cold and we said we're going to make it to the house of God. And praise the Lord, we made it here, so we might as well make the best of it tonight. Let's stand and go before the Lord right now. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We're here to worship and to praise you. Lord, we want to have a wonderful service tonight in the name of Jesus. And so right now, we're inviting your presence here tonight, Jesus. Have your way in this room, Lord. Touch all hearts, Lord. Lead us to you tonight, God, as we look to you. Have your way in this service, Lord. We want the power of God this evening. We want the authority of Jesus. We want you here with us right now, Lord, as we praise you and as we worship you. Help Help us, God, to do it with a heart of gratitude and a heart of true praise. Something that starts from the inside and it comes out and it says, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful that you saved me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just let God have his way tonight. Reverend Pugh is going to lead us in songs right now. God bless you. Amen. If you want to turn your page to page 155 in your hymnal, page 155, we'll sing, Oh, I want to see him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to be the house of the Lord tonight.
do more and more for you because that great light, I'm going to let it shine in my life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated tonight. Praise God. Thankful for all those that made it here this evening. And we're really just looking forward to all that the Lord is doing here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Want to have more group studies, more soul winning, more getting out there and just meeting new people and telling them, hey, there's a Savior out there, okay? His name is Jesus, and if you haven't met him, well, you really should, and he's pretty awesome. You know, he loves you so much, and he really wants the best for you. And that's what it's all about, sharing the love of Jesus. That's what we want to do here. We want to share Jesus. We want to lift up Jesus, the Son of God. Is there anything better to do in this world? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because, you know, in the light of eternity, guess what? It's still going to be about Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're looking forward. I know, Pastor, you said a lot. You're always looking forward to something. We are. We are. Okay. That special service is going to be coming up here sometime whenever the ground thaws out. Okay. <laughs> whenever the sun comes back out, we still want to have that special service outside. And, July. What was that? July. July. Yes, it'll be in July. So <laughs> but we're looking forward to July. <laughs> I know. Hey, that's okay. Then we'll be handing out lemonade or something. Who knows? That's good too, right? Lemonade's good. Coffee's good. Coffee's always good. Amen. Iced. Okay. Praise the Lord. I don't want iced coffee right now. Or take it hot. Amen. All right. Well, that's enough, Pastor. So I'm going to ask Reverend Pew, sir. I know you're all strapped up with the guitar. Okay. I'm going to ask you to receive the offering. Did you have a special light up? I was just going to play so there's not a, a dead space. Oh. That's all right. That'll, that'll ring the whole time. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind praying to you, sir. Lord, we're thankful again for your goodness this time that we can be here and to be a blessing unto you, Lord God. We ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver and have this offering to meet the need of your work here in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. This will be the last Sunday that Sister Woods is going to be with us. That's my wife's mother. And then she's getting out of here on Monday, right after this Sunday morning service. So she'll she'll still be here on Sunday morning and possibly Sunday night as well. We'll see. And so we're glad for her to be here during this time while uh, my wife's recovering from the baby and everything. And then right after mom leaves, then... My wife's grandmother, sure. she'll be coming in shortly after that same week, I think Wednesday. So we'll see who comes after that, but that was the plan. The plan was to have kind of family members uh, rotating through, the ones that are able to come. Everybody wants to come, but the ones that are able to come. But amen. We're thankful for family, but I'm thankful for the family of God even more. Amen. amen. And I'm glad to have my own family be Christians because that makes it even better. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm thankful that my blood family is saved, all right? That's what I'm thankful for. But even if they weren't, they're still the family of God. Amen. You're never alone. And so tonight we're looking at the book of Philippians chapter 3. If you'd like to join me here, Philippians chapter 3. And... Preaching to you about knowing Jesus. Knowing Jesus. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. That's verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Reverend Pew, sir, if you could please pray. Sure. Loving Father, we're thankful for this time that we can be here in your house. Thank you for each one, Lord God, setting aside the time to, to be here, to receive from you, Lord God. We ask that you would continue to bless these hearts. Lord God, keep your hand upon us and accomplish your will in this service. We ask that you would bless Pastor as he ministers to us, Lord God, your word. We thank you for your presence. 
Amen. To know him. When you back up in Philippians chapter 3, go back to verse 8. He said, Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Just to know him. Just, to, just the fact that I know Jesus. Everything that I ever gave up in my life just to know him. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I just want to know him. For whom I have suffered the loss of many things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Yes, that's right. The stuff that I lost just to gain Jesus uh, is down the toilet. Let's just put it that way, all right? That's a very poetical way of writing it. But he's getting real. Yeah. And be found in him. I want that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Faith, faith, faith in Christ, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. You know, when you read things like this in the Bible, they are written in such a way where I believe that the person writing this down, and I understand that the Holy Spirit moved upon the holy men of God as they wrote the scriptures. But really, as Paul, whether he was dictating it and somebody wrote it down or he penned it himself the first time, I believe that when he wrote this down, he's writing it down like he believes it himself. He knows what he believes in. I know him. To know him. Many people say they know Christ, but do they really? That's the question. Do they really know him? Or is it just simply a, I know of him, right? It's different when you say, I know of somebody. And then when you really get to know him, then you know him, right? When you're dating, unless you've had a couple of arguments, you don't know them. Amen. You do not know them. You don't know until you've had at least a couple of arguments. You don't know them. You don't know them. Amen. That's it. You got to get them. Just, just poke the bear once in a while. Just see what's. What's it going to be? I'm serious. If you haven't had an argument, you've been dating somebody for a while, you haven't had one argument, you need to just make them mad. <laughs> just make them mad and realize that's going to be like maybe one-tenth of what you might get if they really get mad, right? But you got to get to know somebody. That's my point, okay? Maybe I'm not saying go out there and do something mean to somebody, all right? <laughs> Pastor, you're, you're really promoting something negative. What I'm saying is you really better know somebody. Just say Pastor said Pastor said, yes, Pastor said, <laughs> if they smile, you know, they're good to go. Go ahead and marry them. <laughs> no, you know, it does. It's not on my outline, but you spend enough time with somebody, you're going to get on each other's nerves. That's just it. But moving on here to know Jesus. We're not, not here to tell you how to date people. You read the Bible, it'll show you. But preaching about knowing him, to know him, to know Jesus. When you really know something, you come at it with authority. There is authority. When you have a, a, a knowledge of something, you ever meet a, uh, or listen to or met a doctor or somebody who's well-versed in their field, and when they talk about what they know, the thing which they perhaps have been really educated with, they could say, oh, yes, this guy, you know, he can build a, this, he can build a truck with his, with his uh, eyes blindfolded and his hands backward. He can build that truck. He knows it from the inside and out. And when he talks about that which he's proficient in, like a mechanic building a truck, he'll talk about it with authority, right? Don't you come over there trying to tell him what size bolt to use over there because he's going to tell you, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. I know the right size bolt for this piece right here. And he's going to say it with authority. Authority comes with knowing Jesus. Authority. When you really know Jesus, you're going to have some authority. All right? You're going to have, I mean, as soon as you get saved, you ought to have some level of authority with the way that you live your life and the way that you talk about Jesus. There ought to be some authority because you've had an experience with Jesus. He saved, as soon as he Amen. saved me from my sins, yes. man, that experience alone gave me all the authority to jump yes. and shout and say hallelujah. And when somebody asked me, What's the difference, or what's wrong with you, or why are you different? I tell them with authority. I'm saved. I gave my, I, you know what, bro, I really got saved. I was just playing around, but now I really got saved. Authority, it means legal power or a right to command or to act. 
the authority of a prince over subject, etc. The power derived from opinion, respect or esteem, influence of character or office, it is credit. Authority can mean, can mean testimony or witness or the person who testifies. Authority, it is credibility. Credibility, authority, the weight of a testimony. It's credibility. Coming at it with authority. I am credible. You know, if I can't say, I'm not going to say something about Jesus like, well, maybe, uh, 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 you know, kind of, well, you know, and I understand some people are shy. And, and sometimes you have to fight that. People that are <coughs> introverts, perhaps, or they just don't, you got to fight that. But you can't be going around talking about Jesus like, well, maybe he's real or maybe the uh, No. That's right. No. Authority. Yes. You don't have to be slam dunk in your face, <laughs> but there's got to be authority behind yeah. what you say. Yeah. There's no ifs or ands. The person who, who's talking to me about Jesus or I'm talking, when they walk away, they should, without a doubt, you know, was that guy, was that gal you were talking to, are they a Christian? They ought to say yes. Yes, indeed. All right? Because when they were talking about Jesus, they said it with authority. There was no backing up from it. And maybe they didn't shove the gospel down my throat like people like to say. You know, anytime you have a standard, anytime you live your life holy, anytime you do, anytime you say, hey, I'm not going out to the bar room. I don't drink. I'm a Christian. Now they feel convicted. Now they feel convicted. Well, you know what? Just say it with authority. No, I'm not going. No. Look, just let them know. <laughs> let them know. You got to let them know. There's authority. And I'm not going to. That's a long definition for authority. But we know who had authority, don't we? Jesus has a lot of authority. But he also had a lot of authority when he was here on earth. And it was something that was so astonishing to people. In Mark chapter 1, verse 22, it said, And they were astonished at his doctrine. They were astonished. They were awestruck. They were taken back by Jesus' teachings. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Not as the other teachers of the law of Moses and etc. But he taught them with authority. Jesus taught the word of God like he knew what he's talking about. You know, when you know the Savior, when you know Jesus, you're not going to be wishy-washy about his word. You're not going to be wishy-washy about what he has done for you. You're going to talk about it with authority. Yeah. There's a difference you can, you can have a, a, a teacher and, a, and a teaching about business and they've never ran their own business. They've never had to do payroll. They've never had to fire an employee or hire an employee. They've never had to uh, cash out, skip a couple of paychecks for themselves just to keep the business running. And then they're going to sit there and tell me how to run a business. I don't want to hear. I want to hear the guy that maybe failed five businesses. And then the last one took off and skyrocketed. And he's been, I'd rather hear from the guy that's been there. Yeah. Well, you know, when it came to Jesus teaching the doctrines yeah. of the Bible, the teachings yeah. of the Bible, he is the word of God. Yeah. He was in heaven with God the Father. And he came down to earth. And so it is no coincidence. It should be no uh, false expectation or whatever. Nothing to be taken back by or be surprised by. That when he taught the Bible, when he taught the doctrines, he did it with authority. He said it like, I know what I'm talking about here, guys. Jesus is real. God is real. He loves you. I don't want to hear about all the lies that the world has to tell you about how God is fake and you just have a crutch to lean on. Well, you know what? Everybody's got a crutch. Mine's the best one out there. He's not a crutch. He's my Lord and Savior. He holds me in the palm of his hand. Oh, he's a friend in time of need. And when I'm, when I'm down and out, guess what? I'm going to lean upon Jesus. I'm going to lean upon him. He's the real authority. Authority is really, it's not being ashamed. It's not being ashamed. And I'm going to read a few verses here. This is again Mark chapter 8. Gospel of Mark chapter 8. Verse 34. And when he called the people unto him, the disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. 
For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gain his own world, gain the whole world, excuse me, and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? And then Mark chapter 8, verse 38. And then when he says this, it's almost as if it just comes out of nowhere. He's talking about choose me, lose the world, gain me. And he said, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Wow. That, it got serious there. Talking about to know him and to have that authority. When you have authority, you're not ashamed, right? Yeah. Uh, there's no police officer that, that at least there shouldn't be. They can't be some kind of a pushover. When they pull a person over, they come at it with authority. They're not ashamed. They shouldn't be ashamed, right? Mm -hmm. And Jesus is here saying that what, what's going to profit? You gain the whole world. You could gain a bunch of friends. You could gain a bunch of popularity. You could gain... A boyfriend or a girlfriend, you could gain a, a husband or a wife. Yeah. But if while doing that, you're forsaking God along the way, you never stood up, you were ashamed of Jesus' teachings. Well, I just didn't say anything. There's a time to speak up. There's a time to have that authority. He said, if you're ashamed of my teachings, ashamed of my words, in this adulterous generation, I'll be ashamed of you. That's a scary thing. And you know, I'd say that if somebody's ashamed of Jesus, if somebody's ashamed and they're timid and they, uh, I'm not talking about being, we want to be wise, all right? I'm not, we're not over here. Don't get a, you know, if, as if you say God tells you it's between you and the Lord, all right? But don't get a sign and go, Stand on the corner and start shouting at people, all right? That's not what we're saying. But what I am saying is, really, there's a time to speak up. Because not communicating is communicating. People will be talking about something, right? They're talking about some sinful things. And then if you're just kind of standing there, just... whatever, right? Sometimes you don't say anything. They think you're okay with it. They think you're cool beans, they think it's all right. It's all right with so-and-so. They didn't speak up. Come on, let's go. Amen. Let's go. And then before you know it, you're in some car going somewhere and you don't want to be there. And you're now you're really feeling ashamed, but you're feeling ashamed before God because you didn't have any authority. But when you know Jesus, you're going to have authority to stand up for what's right. You're going to stand up for what's right. There's authority. When you know him, you can't help it. All right? Now I understand. Everybody's different. Some people, even some preachers, they're just, you know, they, they're just a little bit more calm. Some people are more excitable. Some people are more calm. But when you know him, you're going to be loud about him in one way or another. You're going you're gonna to get loud about Jesus. I'm just saying. It's going to be in one way or another. Everybody's got whatever your scale of being loud is, all right? Everybody's got a different scale, right? Reverend Pugh might be able to shout off the housetop and then you can hear him a block away and then Sister Lolita, she might shout and then you're only going to hear a couple houses down, okay? Whatever it may be, okay? Or maybe, maybe she'll shout you down, Rev, I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Anyway, but whatever your level of being loud is, you, you got to take that, that meter, if you will, and turn it up. You got to turn it up, okay? When you know him, you're going to get loud about him in one way or another. You're going to get loud about him in one way or another. In Acts chapter 2, verse 14, but Peter standing up with the eleven, he just got baptized with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Cloven tongues of fire. Praise the Lord. Standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice. And said unto them, ye men of Judea and all that dwell in Jerusalem. And then he went on and he, 
preached a wonderful, wonderful sermon. That's verse 14. Well, I'm sure he lifted up his voice, but maybe a couple, maybe a dozen people heard him, right? Maybe it was just 20 people. They heard him. Peter lifted up, but he didn't want to be too loud. If you go down to verse 41, it said, And they that gladly received his word were baptized the same day, and there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. This is the same sermon. 3,000 souls in one way or another. Peter got loud, all right? In one way or another, the yeah. preacher lifted up his voice. He said, I got that Holy Ghost fire deep down in my soul. Jesus told them. He commanded the disciples. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. That was a command from Jesus. He said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. Amen. Wait for the power from on high. And as soon as they got it, yeah. Peter got loud. The same one that denied Jesus three times. The same one that said, I go up fishing. And then Jesus had to ask him three times, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, Lord, then feed my sheep. Well, guess what? That Holy Ghost fire came down and he got loud. And he began to feed God's sheep. He began to yeah. proclaim the gospel, if you will, and yeah. spit it out there, however it may be. Uh, sweat flying, tears pouring down your face. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes you just got to get down in it yeah. and preach it and get loud. Yeah. Get loud. You got to get loud. It's biblical. You got to, oh, Pastor, I don't believe you. Listen. He said in Psalm 33, verse 3, Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. Sing a new song. Lift up your voice. There's other parts. He said, make a joyful noise. The whole psalm is good. He said, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is calmly for the upright. It's appropriate. It's beautiful for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp, a stringed instrument like a guitar. Sing unto him with a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth the righteous. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Sometimes you just got to get loud. Play a new song. We love learning new songs around here. Amen. We do. Sometimes some of these new songs that we play, we've been practicing sometimes for a while. I got to get them right. I know I'm always excited. I'm always the one trying to. Trying to get Sister Shabanoff, Reverend Pugh, I'm trying to get him to play it like the next Sunday. I'm like, come on, guys, let's just play it. Let's just play it. They won't know the difference. Right, they won't just sing loud, right? Just play loud. <laughs> the Bible said to play loud, guys. It's all right. If you hit the wrong key, just play loud, right? Just get loud. That's where it comes down to it, just that that worship. Amen. It yes. just does something right. for your soul. It's just healing there's just a healing that goes down to the soul when you lift those hands when you look up when you just you know you know what i'm talking just getting down and dirty in the worship letting the spirit of god just come over you let it, let the spirit of god come over think about jesus some of the words that we sing just think about the words listen to the words Think about God. Think about what Jesus has done for you. Think about salvation. Think about where he brought you from to where you're at now. And just begin to worship. Begin to sing. Begin to get loud. It's good. This is good stuff. Even as uh, perhaps as my wife is singing as she's playing, it's all right to stand up. Yeah. It's all right to begin just to pray out loud. It's all right. Yeah. If the devil don't like it, oh, well. be louder. Amen. 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 My first church... And I went, we was in North Carolina. All right. And I, it's not like the South, but it's still a lot of Southern, you know, hospitality type of things there. And uh, there were just some, some good old brothers and sisters there. They just got down and dirty and they got loud. Amen. They just got loud. I mean, they're, you, you go through the whole service, all you're going to hear, amen, amen, hallelujah, praise God. You know, amen. hey, even the devil can't fall asleep in that service, all right? But really, it's awesome. Just get loud. And we're not looking. I'm not looking for every single point that I make to get the affirmation. You know, well, if you really love God, shout amen. You know, that's not what I'm saying. But really, when you get in, you get loud. You get loud, and it's good. 
It does something for us, and God enjoys it. He has respect to it. When you know him, you know you're going to love him. You know you're going to love him. But when it comes to Jesus, when somebody really, you know, there's that where maybe you just hear about Jesus. But then there's that where pe people begin to really learn about Christ. They begin to really understand the gospel. And the Holy Ghost begins to deal with them, right? That begins to stir things up. And it just gets to a point where you're either going to love him or you're going to hate him. It's just one or the other. That's how it comes down. You either love him or you hate him. And even he said it, you know, if you don't love me, you hate me. If you prefer the world, right? If you're ashamed of me here, I'm going to be ashamed of you when we come later on. He said it's the same thing. You either love him or you hate him. When it comes down to it, you just got to love him. When you really know him, you love him. I'm talking about really experiencing Jesus in your heart. There's a love that flooded over my heart when I got saved. And I couldn't explain it. Never had it before. Come on, now you know what I'm talking about. That love. That love that came down in your heart when Jesus washed away your sins. I felt that burden rolled away. I felt that love flooding over me. And everybody's different. I wasn't sitting there crying, but I just knew. I knew this is God. This is real. And there were tears. Later on in the next services coming up, I mean, I was just, I remember it was like every service after I got saved, the Holy Ghost was just, just boom, boom, boom. Every time the pastor preached, I would just feel that boom, boom, boom. I'd be running up to the altar every time, just praying, sometimes weeping, sometimes rejoicing, whatever, just getting in church. I loved them. I loved him. I loved the Lord. I still love him today. Jesus said in Matthew 22, verse 37, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. This rich young ruler, he came to Jesus asking him different things. And then the second is like unto it. He said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's Matthew 22, verse 37. Love. He said, The greatest commandment is to love God. These are the words of Jesus. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Everything. Everything that's in me has to love Jesus. Even when Jesus is the great shepherd, all right? Even when he's got his shepherd hook and he's got to yank me on my neck and get me straightened out. Even when he's over there and he's just trying to get me to get to a higher level in him and God's dealing with certain things in my heart. I love him. I love him. I love him no matter what, whether it's a sunny day whether it's a rainy day, whether somebody's doing me wrong or everybody seemingly loves me and I feel like it's my birthday, doesn't matter. I love them. I have to love them. This is the greatest commandment of all, to love the Lord your God with everything that's in me, every fiber of my being, every, every thought. Bring it to the obedience of Christ to know that I love him. I love him. He said the second one, the second commandment, here. The second commandment is like unto it. He said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And I know I've said this many, many times, but you have to put it in context. How are you going to love your neighbor if you never love yourself? See, when you know Jesus, you fall in love with him because of what he's done for you. You realize, okay, Jesus, you've done something for me. I love you. And then Jesus, he cleaned me up of my sins. My conscience is clear. Now I'm no longer feeling dirty and filthy. Now I love myself because I'm new. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm a new being in Christ. And now that I love myself, I can love my neighbor. Now I can love my neighbor. You see, when you know him, you love him. When you love him, he loves you. 
and he's always loved you. You don't have to love him. Jesus loves you anyway. But when you really know him and you get saved, you're going to love yourself. You're going to love yourself, and then you're going to love others. And this is the reason why a lot of people, they just, they don't have any love for themselves. And so that's why they're mean to others. That's why they're whatever, just difficult to get along with, or whatever it may be. They need the love of Jesus. That's what it is. Nobody's perfect, but we've all been there, all right? Yeah. All right, don't. Hey, if you got to wake up at 4 a.m. to catch a flight or something, mm -hmm. it might not be as lovable. <laughs> That's maybe after you had a good steak dinner or something, okay? <laughs> but still, there's got to be that love. And I have to keep it. The real love. Only real love will give a true sacrifice. Only the real love. He said in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one will die, yet peradventure, meaning perhaps, for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Who loved me first? Jesus loved me first. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Jesus loved me first. While I was still a sinner, he loved me. While we were, all of us, the whole world, not just the people in this room, not just the people watching online, Jesus died for the whole world. Before we even knew who Jesus was, he already loved you. Yes. Gave his life. And when you know him, you begin to realize all these things about how much he loves you. You can't help it but love him. Reverend Pew, we can come up tonight. We're going to get ready to close here. When I was without strength, Christ died for me. When I wasn't righteous, Christ died for me. He didn't look at it like, well, perhaps I will. Because I wasn't a good man. None of us. None is good. No, not one, the Bible said. But he died for me anyway. And that's his love. So what do I give back to him? Love. I want to know him. I want to know Jesus. I want to know him like I know what I'm talking about. I want to know him like I'm not ashamed of him. I'm going to speak out loud about him. And I'm going to love him all the way to the end. How about it tonight? We bow our heads and as we close our eyes. The question tonight is, do you know him? If you don't, you can. The opportunity is here. If you do know him, show him. Show him. Show God that you know him. Show him that you love him. He wants you to. He wants us. He wants us to show our love for him. And so tonight, the altar's open. I'm encouraging you to pray. Let's pray this evening. Friend, you might be watching online right now and you're, you're thinking, you know, I, I, Pastor, you're talking about all this love and these different things, but I've never experienced that. You can know him right now. If you want to know Jesus, I want you to pray with me. I want you to say, Jesus, I come before you. And Lord, I confess to you my sins. Please forgive me. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I give you my all. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all it takes. Let's show our love to Jesus tonight during this time of prayer. God bless you. Yes, Jesus. It's my desire. Oh, thank you, Jesus. To follow Jesus. It's my desire to live for Him. Though often I have failed, God will not change. It's my desire to live for Him. If you could see 
where Jesus brought me from to where I am today. Then you would know the reason why I love him so. Hallelujah. It's wealth, it's riches. I don't need earth's fame. It's my desire to live for Him. It's my desire. Help someone today, someone who may have failed to see God's way. I too was so lost, but I found my way to God. It's my desire to live for Him. If you could see. Where Jesus brought me from to where I am today, then you would know the reason why I love him so. You can take this world, its wealth, its riches. Bless you as our prayer. Love seeing you here. We want to see you again. Lord bless you.